Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be solving yet another mystery of an unusual dimming star. A star that dramatically changed its brightness, confusing a lot of astronomers in the world, and then changed its brightness once again, either returning back to normal or initiating some other stage. Something that we've discussed in previous videos about other unusual dimming stars. As a matter of fact, in the last few years, there have been some really interesting examples. I think the most famous one by now is the giant star Betelgeuse that changes brightness quite a lot back in 2019. But I think the example that really went viral is the famous Tabby star, officially known as KSC 8462852. And in this case, the star dimmed for some unknown reasons, changing the brightness by about 22%. And I think one of the main reasons it actually did go viral is because one of the explanations, although a very minor and an unlikely explanation, essentially involved some kind of a mega structure, such as a Dyson sphere or a Dyson ring, that in theory could have produced similar effects. But very thorough analysis in the last few years pretty much determined that a lot of this was a result of very unusual dust formation that could have produced this as well. Now in this case it's still a bit of a mystery what exactly caused this, but it's extremely unlikely to have been some kind of a mega structure, because we expect these structures to have very specific effects, such as infrared effects, which were not found in this case. Nevertheless, because it did involve a potential discovery of a mega structure, this idea and this star kind of went viral. But it's also really important to understand that variability in stars or change in brightness of various stars is super super common. Here's actually one example from Princeton University. This shows you various variable stars inside the nearby galaxy known as the Triangulum Galaxy. And here you can kind of see how frequently a lot of stars change in brightness and how they literally twinkle. Although it's not really twinkling, they really are changing in brightness, usually for a lot of different reasons involving physical changes inside the star, such as a typical Cepheid variable, that then produce very predictable changes in luminosity which means that variability in stars is extremely common. But what is uncommon is when this variability breaks the pattern or suddenly changes quite dramatically. So kind of like what happened with the Tabby star, or actually more specifically what happened with Betelgeuse. It is a variable star as well, but in this case, the luminosity changed by way too much to be explained by a simple variability change. If you'd like to learn what the scientists discovered here, check out one of the previous videos in the description. And in the last few years, some of the best discoveries when it comes to various stars and their variability has essentially been coming from the iconic Gaia telescope. The telescope by ESA, whose main purpose is to map the universe around us. Or technically map the stars around us. But it's been doing a good job discovering a lot of things in the process. And so as this telescope was looking around, it accidentally identified something else. Something nobody expected. Another star change in brightness for some unknown, unexplainable reasons. This star is currently known as Gaia 17 BPP. And as you can see from this graph, with the data collected by Gaia, it seems to have dramatically increased in brightness over a period of two and a half years. And then maintain its brightness for about four and a half years afterwards. And so this was a pretty big problem and a pretty unusual problem at that, because it didn't really make sense. What exactly happened here, and what exactly happened here, in order to make the star appear that way? There's no physical explanation we have right now that would suddenly make the star appear much brighter for such a long period of time. And in order to solve this problem, the scientists realized that they actually had to start looking at the star back in time by essentially trying to find some of the other previous observations from maybe other telescopes. In this case, they were able to discover some of the data from the NASA WISE and NEO WISE missions, Zwicky Transient Facility in California, and PanSTARRS-1 Telescope in Hawaii. Or in other words, they were able to then retrace this back in time, looking at the star prior to 2014. With the initial discovery being that between 2012 and 2019, the star was approximately this brightness visible right here. Yet prior to this, it was actually brighter. In other words, what we're observing here is not the brightening of the star, but instead a much longer dimming that might have lasted for approximately 7 years. And this was actually confirmed when looking back at some of the data from the Harvard University that goes as far back as 1950s. This older data suggested that the star was much brighter before as well. Or actually it was about this bright. And during the period of approximately 70 years, it only had that one major dimming that must have reached its peak around 2015-2016. With this right here very likely just being the end of this unusual eclipse. 
something that very likely lasted for several years. With the next natural question being, so what exactly happened? How could a star dim for so many years? Just to return to its original brightness, as if nothing happened. And the answer to this might lie in another star system. A system the scientists explored quite thoroughly a few years ago, known as Epsilon Auriga. This star system had an extremely similar observation, or an extremely similar effect, that lasted for a couple of years. And today the scientists are pretty certain what happened here. They believe this system experienced an unusual eclipse from a partner with a relatively large disk. In this case, some kind of a dusty disk, possibly produced by a star that's either extremely young or extremely old with planets already destroyed. But more importantly, in this star system, the scientists discovered that this actually happens every 27 years, meaning that this star in this case orbits around the central point. And so every 27 years, the star dims for approximately 2 years, with a change in brightness being extremely similar to what was just observed by Gaia Telescope. And thus an extremely similar effect might be occurring around this particular red giant as well. Although in this case, it's a star that's about 50 times as massive as our Sun. So definitely a very different star system. But unlike Epsilon Auriga, the orbit between these two objects is very likely in hundreds if not thousands of years. Which would actually explain why this particular dimming took so long, because the other object is moving really slowly around the larger star, and would also explain why no other dimming effects were observed in the last 70 years. So the orbital period in this case is very likely extremely large. And on top of this, it's believed that the smaller star that orbits around the central star is possibly some kind of an ancient white dwarf with a large debris disk around it. Although in this case it would be difficult to explain how a massive star that's only a few million years old and is about 55 solar masses managed to acquire a white dwarf as a partner that seems to be really ancient and possesses a huge disk around it. So if this is actually the case, it would be difficult to explain how all of this occurred. Obviously this could also be some other type of a star, but it would have to have a reason to have such a large disk. It could obviously be some kind of a really really young star, still growing and still developing, but in that case the lack of emissions from this star, or the lack of any potential signs of its existence here, are also kind of difficult to explain. Typically young stellar objects, as they're known, the objects with a large dust cloud around them, will also produce a lot of other effects that should be visible. Yet no such effects seem to be visible around the star system. So the white dwarf right now is probably the best explanation. Or at least that's the only explanation we have for what might have happened here. There's really at the moment no other way to explain such an unusual dimming effect for such an unusually long time. Nothing else has ever dimmed for 7 to possibly even 9 years. Either way, the fact that two such objects have already been discovered suggests that these types of binaries are potentially extremely common, with many more very likely hiding in a lot of older data. Which means that chances are we're going to be discovering even more in the next few years. As a matter of fact, because of Gaia Telescope and because of its capabilities, it's quite likely that a lot more will be discovered in just the next few months, simply because a lot of this data has still not been processed. But at least for now, that's a pretty cool explanation and a pretty cool discovery. Something we'll be talking more about in some of the future videos. And if you'd like to learn more about other dimming stars and their mysteries, check out some of the videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.